Jeff. And thank you all for being here this morning. Um, I again want to thank the Professional Sportsman Foundation for having us here today, the Archery Trade Association, Dan, uh, and the Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies for sponsoring today's event. And uh, as you know, hunting and fishing are two things that I used to very dearly love and do a lot. I still love them, don't get to do them as much as I used to, but I'm uh, certainly proud to be part of this group. And, I'd be remiss if I didn't get to mention that I got to go red snapper fishing with my son this year for the first time in a long, long time. And it wouldn't have happened without the Congressional Sportsman Foundation and Nick Wiley from Florida who helped uh, make that happen. We got other members here. Uh, I know Greg from Wyoming is here. Drew Ferguson from Georgia is here. Uh, Jeff Duncan obviously was here. Um, Gene Green, I think, will be here. Um, French Hill, I think, came in. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. Um, looking like a preacher on the front row. <laughs> Gary Palmer, um, Jim Walsh, former member, and John Shimkus, I know, was here. And I think I saw Bruce Westerman. He was in the back. And I think I saw Westerman as well. In the list. But uh, as, you, as you know, the Pittman Robertson is it's a foundational act in the United States with funding wildlife conservation. It was passed 80 years ago in 1937, and I think about what we do today that we did the same way 80 years ago. Um, taxes paid by hunters and recreational shooters provide the funds to support the management of the wildlife population or habitats for game and non-game animals. Preserving and enhancing the voluntary revenue source enables states and agencies to provide outdoor recreational activities for all Americans who enjoy the outdoors. I'll tell you one of my primary concerns is the loss of access for recreational property for American working people. Um, the User Pay Public Benefits Act not only uh, benefits the hunters and recreational shooters, but all of our citizens for the delivery of wildlife and habitat conservation by state fish and wildlife management areas. We face an increasing uh, urbanization, suburbanization of our population. It's made it more difficult for the public to participate in hunting and recreational shooting than it was when Pittman Robertson was enacted 80 years ago. Rumor is Senator McCain actually voted for this bill. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going for it. I thought that was funny too. <laughs> it was his first year in Congress. <laughs> Uh, that's why it's now more important than ever that we modernize this important piece of legislation. And if you think about it, what do we do today? I mean, you know, if you had a TV back then, it certainly wasn't a color TV. Um, we, we've got to find new ways to, to attract uh, younger people into the sports. And given the state's flexibility to do that, it, it's just what this bill does. So uh, it redefines hunter recruitment and recreational shooter recruitment as any activity or project to recruit or retain hunters and recreational shooters including the use of social media, marketing, advertising, survey, television spots, print and media, providing education, mentoring, or field demonstration, enhancing access for hunting and recreational shooting, including through range construction, providing education to the public about the role of hunting and recreational shooting in wildlife conservation, and using any other means to ensure the growth of hunting and recreational shooting. To ensure the traditional wildlife conservation remains the primary focus of these funds, the legislation puts a cap of 25% of the amount of Section 4B PR funds that can be spent on hunter and recreational shooter recruitment over a five-year period. The legislation would also clarify by removing an existing prohibition on public relations that the state spending for management of wildlife areas and resources may include spending <coughs> Promotion of hunting and recreational shooting. Uh, it amends Section 10A of the Pippin Robertson Wildlife Restoration Act to include the enhancement of hunter recruitment and recreational shooter recruitment as funding opportunities for grants are made available by the Secretary of the Interior. Finally, the legislation would expand the multi state conservation grant program by providing an additional $5 million per year, which comes <coughs> from the archery related excise tax collections, which I've paid a fair amount of, I might add, to be used for making hunters and recreational shooters recruitment projects, grants that promote a national hunting and shooting sport recruitment program and related communications and outreach activities. Um, 
I think it's a good piece of legislation. I uh, see we've been joined by Jean Graham in the back now. Um, I will tell you that I had hoped that we would put it as, a, as an amendment on the sportsman's package. I don't know what will happen after, after what happened this past week. Uh, it's certainly a piece of legislation that there uh, seems to be very little, uh, if any, opposition to. Uh, we'll have to meet with the leadership team and, and the leadership committee to figure out the best path forward. Uh, at this stage, we don't thought we had that figured out where we go. Um, but the past times that we all love, uh, have got to continue to live into the future, and uh, that means that we've got to bring more sportsmen into the mix and, and attract that next generation uh, to the outdoors, and that means we're going to have to adapt um, some of the things we're currently doing. So uh, with that said, I'm going to take a second to introduce Gene Green and allow Gene. I'll be real brief because you're not here to see us. Uh, I want to thank you for being here. The Sportsman's Caucus is one of our best caucuses in the Congress, simply because we work across party lines. And any chance I can get to get outdoors, uh, whether it be fishing or hunting, uh, it's like, uh, even if it's only a day, it's a good vacation. And, uh, but thank you. What we're trying to do now with our SHARE Act is to come up with uh, an actual compromise on and make sure we move forward with conservation programs that are important to fishermen and hunters and, and everyone else. So, uh, but thank you for being here. And we'll continue to, to try and make sure we can we can get something done in this Congress on the share out. So thank you. Thank you. You know, the caucus, the caucus is one that, that really works, able to work together across uh, part, not just party lines, but geographic lines. And so uh, I'm proud of Gene. Texas as well. So Nick Wiley, Florida Department of Natural Resources. My boat's fast enough in theirs. That's why I don't have any tickets. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, but uh, Nick's a good man. We've had a lot of talk about a lot of a lot of things. His son's about the same age as mine. We talk about duck hunting and uh, and how you get an 18-year-old who thinks they're bulletproof to wear uh, some type of safety device when they're, when they're when they're riding around with waders on. I don't care how strong you are when your waders fill up the water, you're in trouble. That's right. Uh, so with that, Nick. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Well, good morning. Uh, thanks for the turnout. Great turnout. I uh, appreciate everyone being here. I'm speaking today uh, representing our association of fish and wildlife agencies, AFWA. Uh, we're one of the co-sponsors. And um, I just served the term as president. We've got two other past presidents here. I believe Dan Forster was a past president and John Frampton was a past president. And we've got some AFWA staff here as well. Uh, you can see Carol and Jen and Gary. And uh, so we're, uh, we're here to, to really first reflect that all 50 states are supportive of this legislation and uh, really want to see this move forward. It means so much to us because we're on the front line. <coughs> of delivering on access and opportunity for hunting and also delivering on um, the, the, the recruitment of hunters where we it takes a lot of a, a lot of uh, partnerships a lot of work together but we're out there every day uh, trying to to recruit retain uh, and reactivate hunters and uh, it, it just it's something that would with this this bill would mean so much helping us move that mission forward, move all the partnerships forward. Um, we, um, I think many of you already know about the history and importance of the, the uh, Pittman-Robertson Act uh, adopted in 1937, but it has been a foundational system for uh, wildlife conservation in our country, uh, providing permanent dedicated funds from a federal excise tax on sporting arm, arms and ammunition. Uh, and I want to pause a minute, I think it was noted, earlier about um, that excise tax. We, we all, the uh, interesting thing about that excise tax is we all feel like it's our money. We all pay into that money. But one thing I don't want to lose sight of is the industry that manufactures the equipment that we love to take to the field. Those guys pay that, pay that fee directly. And uh, they are all in on helping us with this, with this bill and with this effort to recruit, retain, and reactivate hunters and they know because they're in the business world they know if you don't if you don't reach out and actively try to build up your customer base and support your customer base uh, you're never going anywhere you're just going to continue to decline and speaking of the decline 
Uh, we are just getting a real wake-up call. I mean, we've known for some time that hunting has been, in some states, fairly stable holding its own. In some states, fairly steep decline. Uh, but we just got uh, recent information from our national survey that indicates we've lost about 2.2 million hunters over the last five years. Uh, we're now talking about nationwide under this survey, we had about 13.7 million hunters in 2011. Now we're down to about 11.5 million. So if that's not a wake-up call, if that's not, say, it's time to do something about this. It's time to do something, as Congressman Scott said, it's time to do something different. We have color TV now. We need to be able to spend money and, and, and use this money flexibly to recruit, retain hunters and the bottom line is, we can do that on the fishing side. The Deagle Johnson Act allows us to go out and recruit, retain, and work to, to build up and, and, and support fishing. We cannot do it on the hunting side. The PR Act does, doesn't allow for that. Our hands are tied right now with regard to using those funds in that regard. Um, so we're, we're, I mean, we're at a crossroads now. If we don't decide now, uh, uh, the future of conservation in our, in our nation, the model for supporting conservation, is in trouble. And I'm not, it's not a sky is falling thing, it's real. The future, we're in trouble. And uh, we, we, wanna, we wanna work with you, uh, we wanna support what you do up here on the hill, uh, that's so important to us. Uh, so anything we as the 50 state fish and wildlife can do to be there for you, to help support moving this, this legislation forward, we're gonna be there, we're gonna, we're gonna do everything we can. And those of you that have signed on, and Congressman Scott, your leadership, and, and, and dropping this bill and, and leading it forward. We just, we want to help you move this forward and, and don't want to underplay the, the urgency of doing something as soon as possible to give us the tools. This doesn't increase any taxes, that doesn't increase any funding base. It just gives us flexibility to do the things we need to do. And it also funds, through our multi-state grants program, innovative ways. And the, the thing that really is exciting to me, I believe if we have the tools, we're, we're ready to start turning the corner and doing things differently and, and making sure when we put programs on the ground to recruit hunters that they're going to be working, they're going to be monitored, they're going to be accountable, and they're going to work. And that's what we're doing a lot of groundwork today. And this bill would really set us free and on the road to really deliver on all that. So I appreciate what everybody's doing today. And thank you for coming and uh, be happy to, to hang around and answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Our next speaker is uh, Dan Forrester, Director for Government Relations for the Archery Trade Association. Dan? Thank you, Nick. I have to appreciate all of you uh, coming today and spending time with us this morning. Uh, it's kind of unique to hear from an industry representative that supports a tax. <laughs> but I'm proud to be part of the Archery Trade Association who recognizes the relative value and importance of the history uh, regarding the Pitt Robertson tax. The industry realizes that without that investment, the industry wouldn't be where it is today. It wouldn't be there today without the strong partnership with the state fish and wildlife agencies. And so we stand strongly in support of passing this, uh, this piece of legislation. The folks back in 1937 were very innovative in their thinking. This is one of the best pieces of legislation that uh, we benefit from today. But they couldn't think of everything that would happen you know, decades later. So we find ourselves here today with an industry and a state seeing some declines in participation in hunting and in shooting sports. And while we have uh, over 28 million archers in this country that participate in various forms of archery, the number that hunt is much smaller than that. And we ne need that continued investment, not only for the benefit of the industry, but for the benefit of conservation. So this bill modernizes some of the things that were left out of the original version. And from a practical standpoint, I want to address a couple of those. There's three major pieces of legislation which the author uh, explained, and I'm going to go in a little more detail about that. The first is the fact that it strikes the word public relations as an omission of what you can spend the monies on. If you look at the parallel Dingle Johnson Act, the fishing side, who by the way in their national survey is on the upswing. Okay, they can spend money 
on public relations, on marketing. And when industry says, how come states can't invest in social media and in other things related to public relations, it's because the bill omitted that. We seek to change that. It doesn't tax any differently than it does now. It doesn't uh, fiddle with the allocation of that tax, but it allows state agencies to spend the money on marketing efforts for the recruitment and retention and the reactivation of hunters. And that's why we support that piece. The other piece is with respect to ranges. Right now, states can use the PR dollars to build ranges and maintain ranges, but only that piece of money that is in the 4C pot, which is a smaller pot. It's not the larger 4B pot of money. And that, that pot of money is allocated for hunter education. So you can build a range if it is in association with hunter education. The problem is that pot is pretty small. If you have a major range project, an example is in the author's home state, uh, there was a $5.6 million total project uh, funded on a college campus to build an on-campus uh, archery and firearms range. You can shoot a 300 Winchester Magnum on that campus if you want. Uh, they offer uh, academic courses regarding firearms and intramurals in the whole nine yards, but that is obviously much broader than hunter education, and the pot of money that Georgia could use for that, it basically cleared that slate, all of the money, in one year. And if they had a couple other projects come along, uh, they couldn't fund those, and it put some of the other maintenance activities on the back burner. Again, State probably won't spend more than they do already, but it gives them flexibility. You can draw from the other pot. You can uh, then schedule your range projects uh, more accordingly. So again, flexibility is key. And the third piece is also very important, and that is this country basically is founded on innovation and doing new things. And the archery industry said, you know what? Let's take $5 million out of the PR fund off the top and put that into the multi-state grant program. This is money coming from the archery tax, not the firearm side of the equation, from the archery side. Put that into the multi-state grant program. The multi-state grant program is a program that's currently in effect that the state fish and wildlife agency manage and they fund projects uh, based on a national priority and competitive basis. There's $3 million of the big pot that goes into that currently. And this bill seeks to put $5 million into that pot, which would be used for, again, competitive grants that would fund regional and national R3 projects that are important to the country. Uh, states like Florida, Missouri, Arkansas, Texas, wherever that wants to uh, partner and try new reactivation programs, new recruitment programs, now can compete for that money. And the best thing is we've done a lot of things across the country, but we haven't always monitored those things. And this allows us to be more structured, more strategic, uh, and so we can hopefully fuel that innovation, learn from that, help to grow the sport. So those three things together, we think, uh, it's get good for sportsmen, it's good for the country, and it's great for conservation, and it's supported by a lot of folks, and, and we certainly appreciate the support of you guys, and certainly thank the author for his time and effort, and, and we stand uh, at every twist and turn to help uh, help wherever we can to help get this legislation passed. So thank you for your time this morning.